Concordia University is my alma mater. That's a fancy way of saying it's the university that I graduated from. My first week of political science classes took place in September 2001. I'd been at school for one whole week before the attacks on the World Trade Center on 9-11. I'd been at school one and a half weeks before a friend of mine and I had organized a campus-wide white ribbon campaign for peace. I'd been at school for exactly one year before the 2002 protests and property damage surrounding the speaking engagement of former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But Concordia was also home. Long before I haunted the backstage of the school's theater spaces as a student stage manager and then as a professional theater maker, on sick days and ped days, I haunted my mother's office at the university, where she was part of the theater faculty throughout my childhood. As a SEJEP student, I snuck into the Concordia libraries to read queer history, and clandestine trips on the shuttle bus brought me downtown from home in NDG, walking distance from the Loyola campus. Already, Concordia University was founded in 1974 through a merger of Sir George Williams University and Loyola College. Sir George Williams was founded in 1927, an outgrowth of the YMCA's adult education program and named after the YMCA's British founder. A downtown university with an urban campus, Sir George Williams University offered both day and night classes, bringing in many working students. Loyola College, a Jesuit university founded in the late 1800s, had adopted a liberal arts college model in the 1940s. Until the late 1950s, Loyola College accepted only English-speaking Catholic men as students. Merger plans between the two institutions, spurred by the Quebec government's efforts to secularize education, began in 1969 and were finalized in 1974 creating one unified institution with two campuses, called Concordia University, which borrowed its name from the city of Montreal's motto, Concordia Salus, well-being through harmony. Shortly before merger plans began, a major event of Black activism in Canada took place at Sir George Williams University. From January 29th to February 11th, 1969, between 200 and 400 students occupied the ninth floor of the university's hall building following the breakdown of a complaint process to address racism by one of the university's biology professors against West Indian students. Though the occupation remained peaceful th throughout its initial duration, Negotiations between the university administration and the students eventually broke down, resulting in property damage to the computer center on the ninth floor and a fire being set inside the barricaded part of the university. The police were called in by the university administration and riot squads cleared the students from the building. 97 people, including 87 students, were arrested. Initially, over 1,000 charges were laid against the protesters, though only 50 were eventually heard in court. Two of the protesters, Rosie Douglas and Ann Cools, were incarcerated. Ann Cools received a pardon in 1981 and went on to serve as Canada's first black senator. Rosie Douglas was incarcerated for 18 months in Canada before being deported to his native Dominica, where he went on to become the country's president in 2000. One of the protesters, Coralie Hutchison, died as a result of injuries sustained during the riot squad's intervention. In June of 2020, more than 7,000 members of the Concordia community, faculty, staff, students, and alumni signed on to the Concordia Statement for Black Lives. This statement, addressed to the university administration, called on the university to create structures and policies to end anti-blackness on campus including the creation of a Black Studies department, echoing one of the requests of the students during the ninth floor occupation at Sir George Williams in 1969. One of the demands of the statement is to rename the D.B. Clark Theatre after Coralie Hutchison. 
despite many hours treading under his name as I came in and out of my shifts in the theater, it wasn't until the Concordia Statement of uh -huh. Black Lives that I put together the name with the person who had been principal during the ninth floor occupation and the name I'd seen in our congregational history. I assumed that the theater carried his name because he donated a lot of money, but it feels a little, okay, maybe a lot different knowing who he was and what role he may have played during the computer center occupation. The ultimate response from the university to the ninth floor occupation was to exonerate the professor in question of racism and to establish the ombuds office to deal with student complaints. In October of 2020, in response to the Concordia Statement for Black Lives, the Concordia administration established the President's Task Force on Anti-Black Racism and committed to some of the hiring demands made by the statement. A final report is expected in April 